Today we're taking the game by storm, using the arrow build, and this was designed with the sole intent of capitalizing on Spirit Guardians, also known as the best spell in the game. We'll be flying around, weaving our way between enemies while boasting a high armor class, party utility, and meta magic. So, fasten your seatbelts, we're about to take off. For the first level, we'll go into Sorcerer, picking Storm Sorcery as our subclass. This will allow us to fly with Tempestuous Magic as a bonus action after casting a spell, and ignoring opportunity attacks. This is going to be the foundation of our build, allowing us to zip around the battlefield like the wind while shredding enemies. For cantrips, grab Minor Illusion, and although the rest are flexible, I'd recommend utility-based choices here, as it rounds the character out nicely, especially since our main class will ultimately be a cleric. Taking Shield and Featherfall for spells. Shield is invaluable, since it can be used as a reaction and shows both the action and dice roll that you're being targeted with. As for Featherfall, well, just take a look. Recalling that Tempestuous Magic activates after casting a spell. Featherfall counts as a spell, but since it's a ritual, we can cast it an unlimited number of times, giving us incredible mobility outside of combat, or even the ability to precast it before combat for an unconventional opener. For ability scores, we'll put Dexterity to 16, Constitution to 14, and Wisdom to 17. That is, if you're going to use Hair the Hag on this character. Otherwise, put Wisdom to 16, and place extra points in Strength, Intelligence, or Charisma. Pick two of the four proficiencies, three of which use Charisma, and leave a comment if you don't use a Paladin, Sorlock, or Bard in your party. The next five levels will go into the Nature Cleric. Select Guidance for a cantrip, and after that, they're again flexible. Guidance will give consistent boost to dialogue checks throughout the game. Make sure to grab Thorn Whip along the way as well. Select another proficiency while taking Command, Create Water, Healing Ward, and Sanctuary for spells. All of these spells will play a role in the build. Turn Undead and Charm Animals and Plants are gained, and these have very situational use and aren't required in any way to progress the game, but still helpful if the opportunity arises. At level up, Spike Growth and Bark Skin are now acquired, and Spike Growth is an excellent and very underrated spell in the game. You should absolutely get comfortable using this, as it can make many encounters extremely trivial. For second level spells, add Aid and Spiritual Weapon to the spellbook at this point. Spiritual Weapon can add a body to the field, which is always nice, especially since you're flying around, allowing you to place this where you like, rather than relying on its very limited mobility. Aid is an amazing spell, which gets even better if you upcast it. Make sure you do this if you haven't tried it yet. Select any cantrip and take Ability Improvement for your feet, bumping Wisdom up by 2 points, and your score should be 18 or 19 if you plan to use Hair of the Hag. Alright, we beat the game since we now have Spirit Guardians, and jokes aside, this spell is insanely powerful, so much that this entire build is created around it. That being said, add it along with Glyph Awarding, and the last spot can be used to rotate spells as needed. Mass Healing Ward is a decent choice to have at the ready, and change when required. Plant Growth and Sleet Storm are also acquired for domain spells, but given the other options at this level, you likely will not use them. The next three levels will go into Rogue for the Thief subclass, the progression of which is pretty straightforward. Select some proficiencies and expertise that complement your previous choices or party, gain cunning actions, and pick the subclass Thief. Now, the reason for going into Thief is to allow us to cast a spell, Thistle proc, Tempestuous Magic, and also use Cunning Action Dash to increase the mobility on every single turn. Again, if you have Spirit Guardians active and want to conserve spell slots, just use Featherfall. The final three levels will go into Sorcerer. Pick a spell, and Magic Missile is nice if you want to guarantee damage on a target, but any choice here will likely see seldom use. For the Meta Magic, grab Twin Spell. The other choice is flexible, and your point should be reserved mainly for Twinned and Quickened once we get it. At this point, pick up Mirror Image for defensive purposes and Quicken Spell as previously mentioned. At the final level, grab a Cantrip and Spell. Careful to pay attention to which spells remaining are Concentration, as you can't use them at the same time as Spirit Guardians. We'll grab Gust of Wind in this guide for RP reasons. For the Feat selection, take Mobile. This will further enhance everything we can do. With Quicken Spell, you can do things like Disengage, Create Water, and Zap your foes for huge damage all in one turn. Using Thorn Whip to pull enemies into Spirit Guardians never gets old. Overall, the build is a refreshing, unique take that's technically a nature cleric, and that's pretty rare in this game. Enormous thanks to the Rod version for sharing this build. And one final tip if creating the character from scratch would be to use a Wood Elf or Half Wood Elf for Fleet of Foot. But as you can see, it's not required. Hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.